So at this point, I've shown off Easter eggs in Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and Wind Waker. And without realizing it, I guess I've been going in order through the 3D Zelda games. So I guess it only makes sense to cover the next game in the series, so here it is. Here are some Easter eggs in Twilight Princess. So, not counting Majora's Mask, this game is probably the darkest entry in the Legend of Zelda series. What better way to get this dark and greedy game underway than to start with some chicken facts? That's right, chickens are awesome. In Zelda, they're called cuckoos, which are even better. Twilight Princess gives us both cuckoos and a very creepy human-faced chicken called the Uku. Its name can be viewed as a hex code, 00CC00, which happens to be the color code for the green used in Link's outfit in the first Zelda game. While on the topic of Ukus, they are actually inspired by the M.C. Escher painting Otherworld, just as creepy. Let's move on to the actual cuckoo eggs. So far in Zelda games, when you repeatedly attack one of the chickies, they would attack in a large swarm. In this game, attacking a cuckoo ten times will let you take control of it. You can walk around and jump for a short time as cuckoo. This might prove useful... who knows, I have no clue. Throughout the game are patches of a plant called hawk grass, which lets you summon a hawk to do your bidding. Bonus real quick, if you look up in the sky above those patches of grass, you can actually see the hawk hanging out. Nice attention to detail. If you send your hawk out targeting a cuckoo, it'll actually pick it up and bring it back and drop it in Link's hands. At Flabby's Flight by Fowl Chicken Hut, I, I'm sorry, that is just very difficult to say. If you'd pay the mission and then throw out all the cuckoos, Flabby will wonder where they all went and then tell Link he'll have to fly on his own. Since we're already here, here's a trick that you might find useful. While flying with the cuckoo for this minigame, if you equip the iron boots, physics will take over and Link will actually fall faster. Repeatedly equip and unequip the boots for a more controlled flight. A little practice will make this minigame much easier with the iron boots, but I'm not that good. On the topic of iron boots, while wearing them, Link can actually damage enemies by rolling. It's pretty strong and it can actually knock down certain enemies. Another rolling trick is a special sword strike that Link can perform at any time. Just roll and press B during the roll. At the end of the roll, Link will actually thrust out his sword, which happens to be stronger than a normal strike. But unfortunately, it's pretty difficult to land. Oh, so you know how whenever Link finishes off a boss, he'll put his sword away in the most stylish way possible? Well, you can do it whenever you want, sorta. After defeating an enemy, press A and Link will sometimes sheath his sword like a cool guy. It doesn't seem to work against all enemies, but it's pretty awesome regardless. Alright, so we want to go and use the cannon in Lake Hylia, but first let's check out Fire the Clown. On his shirt is a Bonsai Bill, a reference to the Mario series. Get in the cannon and headed towards the Oasis, and just for a moment, let's appreciate the shortcut scene. Man, that's great. Anyway, so this is a bit of a stretch, but when you land in the desert, take a look behind you. Over Lake Hyla, there's a large rock formation which looks suspiciously like Yoshi. Alright, it's your favorite part, maybe, I don't know. It's time for references. Queen Rutella's theme is a remix of the Serenade of Water from Ocarina of Time, and her necklace resembles the Zora Sapphire from the same game. Throughout the game are multiple Howling Stones, mysterious stones that Wolf Link can howl into to learn new skills. Each stone has its own song, and the first four are a reference to the songs from Ocarina of Time. It'll be easiest if I play each song, along with the one it's referencing. Have a quick listen. Okay, so in this game, the fishing hole makes a return, and it's much better than before, in my opinion. The owner is a pretty interesting lady named Henna. When you take a look at one of the pictures in her house, she'll actually comment telling you how she hopes she's a descendant of the master fisherman seen in Ocarina of Time. She'll even imitate his classic back scratch. While we're here, talk with her pet bird, Purdy, for a while. Its comments will get increasingly rude, eventually calling Link an idiot and telling him to go home. If you try and fight back and roll into his cage, Hannah will scold you. Do it enough and she'll actually force you to leave. When you come back, she'll force you to apologize. No getting out of this one.
On the topic of fishing, during the last stage of the final battle against Gandorf, pull out that fishing rod. I swear it makes sense. You can actually cast a line past them to distract the big baddie. Use it to make landing a hit that much easier. The last reference is to Majora's Mask. The Lost Woods is a thing, and in it is a school kid whose face bears a resemblance to the creepy moon from Majora's Mask. It also knows an unsettling version of Saria's song. Going back to some more useful things, Link can quickly mount opponent by running directly behind and pressing A. He could alter this mount at full speed by doing something similar. For a more cinematic playing experience, while riding opponent, boost and then draw your sword. Link will raise it above his head, ready for battle. The last neat little opponent thing I have for you is that while in wolf form, you could actually talk to her. She'll tell you to hurry up and return to your true form. All business with this pony. In this game, fall damage isn't all that bad, but regardless, here's a way to avoid it. In the latter parts of the game, once you have the spinner, jump on it and then leap to your possible death. This way, you won't take any fall damage, but keep in mind that you cannot activate the spinner mid-jump. The pumpkins in Ordon Village can grow if you pour some water out of a bottle on them. This will make them drop better items. The night sky over Hyrule is an accurate representation of the real night sky, or at least I think it is. I'm way too lazy to double check and triple check just to make sure, so just take my word on it. Oh, and I know I'm getting into this way late into the video, but for the Wii version of this game, the world is totally flipped left to right. This is because normally Link is left-handed, and to make it easier with motion controls, Link needed to be right-handed. Makes me wonder though, did they also flip the sky? Who knows, I'm not gonna check. On your way to the first dungeon, you can steal lantern oil and red potions from the bird named Trill. If you run off without paying, the next time Trill sees you, he'll call you a thief and attack. This is a reference to Link's Awakening, where you can live out your fantasy of being a thief just like this game. Also, this is really minor and sort of stupid to even say, but the first time you open a door, dirt will fall off it in a dungeon. So the next time, it'll be clean. Get it? Because like the, the dirt settles and then like you open it and the dirt falls. Anyways, I, I shouldn't have even mentioned it. And let's move on! In Hyrule Castle Town is a fortune teller who only charges 10 rupees per fortune. For her career fortune, her chance is actually, what am I talking about, spelled backwards. The love fortune has a similar hidden meaning. Wait, loading takes a while, spelled backwards. That's, that's pretty awesome. If you go into Hyrule Castle Town as a wolf, everybody will be afraid, and that's pretty funny. The guards will circle you, but they don't seem to attack. Go ahead and charge up Minda's attack, and when struck, the guards will actually drop an item and flee. This is a great way to gather resources with pretty much no consequence. Speaking of Wolf Link in town, if you transform inside Dr. Borville's clinic, he won't actually notice that Link's a wolf. That's some pretty awful eyesight. I don't want him as a doctor, that's for sure. The children from Ordon Village are something special. If you try attacking them, they'll dodge by ducking down. It doesn't matter the weapon, really. They're pretty skilled at dodging too. I mean, look at that reaction time. From extremely far away, or close, it, it just doesn't matter to them. Inside of Iza's rapid ride boat shack, if you blow up the hanging jar, she'll tell you to cut it out. Return, do it again, and she'll demand 10 rupees. She wants some compensation and won't take no for an answer. All future destruction of private property will cost 10 rupees each. In Kakariko Village, Barnes Bomb Shop has one simple rule. Lanterns are strictly prohibited. I mean, it makes sense. It's a bomb shop. We don't want everything to explode. Or do we? Well, we could at least try. If you pull out your lantern in front of Barnes, he'll tell Link to put it away. Anywhere else in the shop, Barnes will pull down his mask and summon a torrent of water out of nowhere. An empty lantern has no fire, so that's allowed. In Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, the postman was a workaholic with an obsession with running fast and staying on schedule. In Twilight Princess, he's grown to be a bit weirder in my opinion. He can be found in various locations across Hyrule, so here we go. In Hyrule Town, he can be found in the corner of Telma's bar. Apparently, he's looking at a menu, trying to decide what to have. Seems reasonable. In Zora's domain, he's crouching behind Prince Rawai's throne, trying to figure out which sword to deliver this letter to, since it's addressed to Mr. Zora. I can see how that could be pretty difficult. In Kakarika Village, in Eld Inn, he's in front of the kitchen fire, trying to dry a letter he dropped in the hot springs. Smooth. In Ordon Village, he's in the corner of the ranch's barn. Apparently, he's going to feed a messy letter to one of the goats. Come on, Mr. Postman, you're supposed to be a professional. The last location is strangely enough in the Cave of Ordeals, which we found in the desert. He's at the 50th floor down, saying, I think you're lost. It's got to be around here. Why would he even be down there? Is he delivering mail to Satan himself? Like, how would he even get through all the enemies to get there in the first place? It doesn't make any sense. In Twilight Princess HD, released on the Wii U, there's a few small references to the upcoming Zelda game Breath of the Wild. In Hyrule Castletown, head into Chudley's shop. 
make sure you get your shoe shine first, otherwise you won't be let in. In the HD version, the paintings on the walls are taken from Breath of the Wild's trailer. To compare, I checked in the original GameCube version, and the paintings are all classic rich people type paintings that you'd usually see. There we go, another Zelda game covered. I'd like to take this time to thank all the new viewers that have subscribed over the last month or so. Over 160 subscribers decided they want to see more videos. That's pretty awesome. Double thank you to anybody who watched this far, it means a lot. If you haven't seen them, check out the videos on screen or in the description for more Zelda easter eggs from me. Thanks for watching, have a great day.